There's a lot that you can do in post-production these days with manipulating your image. There are certain key things which still require optical filters to be done properly. Circular polarizers, for example, linear polarizers, which are gonna add that saturation to the sky and work with reflections, etc. Rebel NDs or fixed NDs are, of course, absolutely essential if your camera doesn't have a built-in ND. And then there's diffusion filters, you know, like these ones here. Too often, many people think diffusion filters are just effect filters. But when used with the right strength, focal length and subject, they can have a subtle but significant effect on your image. Subtlety is the key though to using diffusion filters. A stylized look is fine for certain things, of course, but a filter that improves the image almost imperceptibly is pure gold. But in all my years of using diffusion filters, I've never been completely happy with the results and I own a hell of a lot of them. So when I was offered the opportunity to make my own, I naturally jumped at it. I've been working with Format High Tech to make these diffusion filters for well over a year. It's been a painstaking process because I've wanted them to be absolutely perfect. The perfect diffusion filters for me, which I truly believe will translate to the best diffusion filters for you, or most of you, I hope. I've owned filters by Format High Tech for my map boxes since I began my freelance career. They make some of the highest quality filters out there. They're used on big Hollywood productions like Dune and The Batman, both lens by the great Greg Fraser. My filters are made using the same high quality glass used in 4x4 and 4x5.65 matte box filters. As I generally don't use matte boxes and mostly use still lenses, I need my filters to be circular screw on. I shoot with all in camera sharpening turned off, if the camera lets me, but even then sometimes the image can look too clinical, too perfect, especially with modern lenses. So this is where my Bloom Gold filters come in. At its core, Bloom Gold is a warm halation filter that slightly reduces resolution with a slight reduction of contrast. It creates a gorgeous bloom to visible light sources while smoothing out fine details like skin without affecting the low frequency details. The contrast reduction is much more subtle than other filters due to the gold particles. Of course, with contrast, it's super easy, barely an inconvenience to add back in post if wanted. The filters are available in three different strengths. The weakest is one eight, then a quarter, and finally one half. The one eighth is my favorite, and it basically lives on my lenses for almost everything I shoot. It's the most subtle one. Um, when you go through footage shot with it, you can easily forget you had it on. It's only when you look at footage shot without it do you realize, despite it being subtle, just how much it improves the image by taking the edge off of that digital look and the way it handles harsh highlights is magical. Diffusion filters are commonly associated with filming people and the Bloom Gold filter again excels here. And the lighting wasn't the most flattering at this angle with the model skin also looking shiny. Using the 1.8, the highlights get subtly diffused, almost completely removing the shine from her skin. You can also see the blooming of the light behind her. This effect is increased when using the stronger filters. One of my favorite things about them is their effect on faces by reducing high frequency details like blemishes or wrinkles without overly impacting the image. In these examples, you can see the differences between no filter and the three different strengths. When filming myself, I tend to use the one quarter, but my face definitely needs more help these days than it used to. If you've seen any of my videos from the past year or so, not just on my main channel, but also on my One Man Five Cats channel, you've seen a lot of stuff shot with Bloom Gold. I use it a lot, especially the one eighth. That lives on my lenses. I very, very rarely shoot without it. It's not just the strength of the filter that's going to play a part in how strong our diffusion effect is going to be. It's going to be the focal length as well. This is something that is rarely talked about in regards to diffusion filters. I've used many 
which are just unusable on telephoto lenses. After all, those particles inside the glass are going to appear bigger the longer you go. I think the 1 8 looks great, even at the very long focal lengths like 400 millimeters here. Yes, the diffusion effect is stronger, but the detail is still there. If I feel I need more consistency between the focal length shots, then I might add a touch of post sharpening. The one quarter is surprisingly usable on longer lenses, although you might find the diffusion too much if you try to use too long a focal length. I don't tend to use the one half on much over 85 millimeters, but it all comes down to taste. What's going to be a big factor on which to use is what you're filming. And if there are any strong reflections or light sources in the frame, as the blooming will become much more prominent. This is why for me, one eighth and one quarter are an essential pair to have. And what I use 95% of the time with the one eighth being the main one. Don't forget, unless you're going for an obvious diffusion effect, the best results with them is with subtlety. The gold is a very striking colour. It's non-reflective paint, so don't worry about that. But I know it's not going to be for everybody. That's why we're also making them with black rings, so you can be much more subtle. One of my favourite times to use the Bloom Gold is at night. And so many artificial lights when you go out and about, you get such a pleasing, subtle blooming on them, whether it's vehicle headlights or other lights. At the time of making this video, the filters are available in 49, 67, 72, 77 and 82 millimeters. If there's enough demand for other sizes, they may well get made. So if you want something else, let them know in the comments. I normally buy all my filters in 82 millimeters and use step up rings for lenses which have smaller filter threads. This is what I would generally recommend if you are considering buying any blue and gold filters, unless you are a utterly loaded so you can buy them all or more likely B use a lot of lenses with small filter threads you don't want to be stepping up to 82 millimeters from those as it, uh, it defeats the purpose of having small lenses and this 49 millimeter one is really rather cute Digital effect filters are great, but I've yet to come across any plugins that can look as good as an optical diffusion filter. The digital filters work across the entire image in a linear method. Everything gets changed unless you mask it off. Physical filters operate in a more complex way because the light spread across pixels is variable and unique to each filter. This allows modification of fine resolution without making everything fuzzy. This is why I recommend using optical diffusion filters and in particular, this rather lovely new one called Blue Gold. I am very proud to have my name on such incredible filters, and I genuinely believe these are the best diffusion filters I've used. If you buy any of them, I hope you will feel the same way as I do.